We're heading out of the studio to do a virtual production test and I'm bringing a secret weapon. It's kind of a virtual production Swiss army knife and I've got it running on this phone. But before we get where I'm going, we need to skip back a moment. So I'm at the point of doing some previews for a short film. I've built part of my world in Unreal Engine. So now it's time to start testing out some shots. I can set up a master wide near the pavement, a medium wide at the back of the car, and a close up for the talent. It doesn't feel anything like real location scouting where you can wander around, look through a viewfinder and discover things. And that's kind of important because I think working in this way, my choices are a little safe. To make this a bit more like real location scouting, you'd need to break out some tracking equipment, attach a tracker to a monitor that displayed the Unreal Engine scene which would mean getting video output from Unreal Engine into the monitor, which also means things like capture cards and cables basically gets too complicated too quickly for something that maybe should be really straightforward. It's a bit much. And that's where Lightcraft Jet Set comes in. It's an app that runs on the iPhone that allows you to load in your Unreal Engine scene, walk around it and record takes. But it is so much more than that. And I'm proud to say they're sponsoring this video today. I don't take on sponsors very often, but I think we found something pretty unique here. Jet Set uses the time of flight sensor on the iPhone to scan the real world environment. So you just tap on one of the grids that it offers you in the app and you can set a ground plane. And from that point, your environment will spawn around you and you can have real time camera tracking in six degrees of freedom. <laughs> the tracking quality is surprisingly good. I'm actually very impressed. It's robust. I haven't noticed any slipping and sliding. And although it's not a sub pixel track, the developers have told me they've got some tricks up their sleeve for down the road. That's a bit exciting. It's great to see some good keying options within Jet Set as well. It defaults to the depth map based rotoscoping, which uses the time of flight sensor on the camera and AI to identify people within the image. It can also identify random body parts like hands. So it's very useful, but it's really only useful for preview because it's a very jaggy edge, but it also has green screen or blue screen options. You can literally select your key color and you can also then adjust sliders to improve the mask. So a cool feature of Jet Set is the ability to add scene locators, which allow you to quickly hop from one part of your environment to another. I'm currently in the trench run scene on the iPhone app, which is just built in by default. And it's a lot of fun. I'm a massive Star Wars fan, as you can probably tell. But this allows you to basically hop from, say, the Origin, which is just down on the ground, up to perhaps a TIE fighter cockpit. There you can see the X-Wings out the front. But then, of course, I can hop over to an X-Wing as well. And one of my favorite modes, which is the 100x mode, it's basically a scene locator that's scaled to 100 times, which means I can get sweeping drone shots and movements around a large environment. So my city scene needs some scene locators before exporting out the Jet Set app. So I'm going to add one empty actor into this elevator right here, and I'm going to call that scene loc underscore elevator. The scene loc prefix is how Jet Set knows it's a scene locator. So that's the important bit. I'm also going to parent this scene locator to the elevator because it's an animated object object moves down the building and I want the camera that attaches itself to the scene locator to move with the elevator. I'll also add another scene locator down at street level and another one inside this car which is another animated object and one more scene locator up in the sky which is going to be a drone shot so I'm going to scale that by a hundred times to get a much more exaggerated camera move. So what needs to happen now is my scene needs to be exported from Unreal Engine in USD format and then I'm going to use another piece of software called AutoShot which is going to convert the USD into a USD SDZ file, which is going to be read by the Jet Set app on the iPhone. Jet Set already have a ton of really detailed tutorials on their website, which are really easy to follow, so I'll link them in the description below. We need to take this outside. So here we are, wide open space. This is what I wanted to do. Now my scene is a city, so I wanted to see if I could go for a walk around it. Not something that I can do in a home studio. It's dumb. I know probably no one is going to do this, but it was my first thought, can I walk around my environment? So I'm going to load up the app. Let's have a go. I've come a long way for this, but this is probably the point where it crashes. Come on. Oh, okay. I think we're good. So now I can have a look around. It'll scan the environment. The grid gets bigger and I should just be able to tap on the grid. That sets my ground plane. And yes, we are in my environment, but I'm currently at the origin. There's basically nothing there. So I'm going to select a scene locator and put myself at street level. And here we are. So there's my cabby car, all the buildings all around. <laughs> I can just look around. And there's a really cool little slider here called the ghost slider, which I can just slide down and go half and half between the real world and the virtual world. If I just put it right on the edge of 
half and half. I can basically get a bit of a sky replacement, which I quite like, I like that. If I don't want to be facing in a particular direction, I just need to click on origin and I can just spin that around with my finger there. Here we are, there's my car. It's right here. <laughs> and I can just peer through the window. Let me just go for a walk down the street. Wow. You can just see how the environment and the buildings in the virtual world just stick, track together. That's great to look at. I'm gonna go visit a shop. I'll be right back. Now you'll see this is not displaying the lighting information from Unreal Engine. This is more like unlit mode with preview materials. The meshes are full quality, which is amazing. And these are kit bash meshes, by the way. So these are really dense and I'm quite impressed that they're playing back on a phone in the first place. But the point of this isn't to do things perfectly and to see everything in full quality. It's to iterate quickly, come up with shots, do takes. And then when you want to see them in full quality, you can get them from Jet Set over into Unreal Engine to play back or do renders with Path Tracer. This was really worth it, but it's very cold. So I'm just gonna go back to the studio, the nice warm studio, and load these takes into Unreal Engine. <sighs> it's good to be back in the warm. Now, obviously you don't have to leave your studio if you don't want to, that's not what this is about. I just know how easy it is to get a bit too cozy. Being outside in the real world with the phone in one-to-one -one scale with the virtual world started to make it feel a bit more real. And I started to get that vibe of real physical location scouting again, which is a nice feeling. And it only really occurred to me since I've been playing with this app that I get some of my better ideas when I'm out of the confines of the studio, which means that if I have an idea and I want to test out a shot or change a focal length or just play, I can just pull that phone out and try it and I don't have to fire up the full studio to do it. And I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, Josh, this isn't new. There are apps that already do lots of these things, but I haven't really scratched the surface with this yet, actually. I've just been talking about the basic features. They have a whole other tier called Jet Set Cine, which takes this from a fun previous tool into something that studios can use in a pro workflow and a superpower, by the way, that I haven't seen in any other virtual production app. Now, if you're interested in filmmaking with Unreal Engine or virtual production in general, then watch this video next because I break down the process from start to finish and the end result will give you an idea of what's possible in a really short space of time. See you there.